says the Lord through the prophet Isaiah, I will once again deal marvelously with this people. Wondrously marvelous. I like when God deals like that. Here's what God's done. A peg, the peg in a firm place has gave way, and the load hanging on it. So you are no longer offensive to God. Amen. Christ has taken the sin away from you. And as account of this, you can know God. They shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. So no matter what your status is here on earth, you can know God because you are made in his image. Amen. God says, I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sin no more. Now, God is just. When he says, I will forgive, you are forgiven. Amen. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, being justified by faith. When God justifies, you are justified. And Christ himself is our peace. We are no longer in opposition with God. You don't want to be in that place, and we aren't. Amen. There is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation. This is the word of God. God can't lie. Amen. No condemnation for those who are in Christ. Amen. We have the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, Paul says in Romans, the hope of glory maketh not ashamed. If God promises, Amen. you can lay your hope on that, and he will bring it about. God can't lie. I like that. He hasn't spared his own son, but delivered him up for us. For us. Delivered up his own son on, on our behalf. Christ has given us the right to be called sons of God. And when Christ gives you the right, then you have the right to be called sons of God. And we are not, we are not ashamed of God. And God is not ashamed to be called our God. I rejoice in that. All things pertaining to life and godliness has been granted to us. All things. You have the resources in Christ to be pleasing to God. You are made complete in Christ. All things have been granted to you. Amen. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Therefore, God sends his servants out, saying, Come, for everything is now ready. He has said, Go to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in here the poor and crippled and blind and lame. Go out in the highways and along the hedges. Compel them to come in that my house may be filled. We have heard this message, haven't we, brethren? Amen. We've accepted the invitation to the banquet of God. So how will anyone come unless they hear? How will anyone have faith unless they have a preacher? Therefore, everyone in Christ has been hired to work in the la or to labor in the vineyard of God, mm -hmm. proclaiming the favorable year of the Lord. Now here we find a principle in the kingdom of God. What you receive, you also give. Now, Christ was given all authority in heaven and earth, so he, he compels you to go and make disciples of all men, because he's given, and so he gives to us. Mm -hmm. Now, Christ said, Whoever shall drink of the water that I shall give him, it shall become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. So Christ gives you the water, Amen. you give other people the water. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is the principle of salvation, see? Those God saves, he uses mm -hmm. to that very purpose. Amen. Now here, you have tasted of the heavenly gift of the good word of God, of the powers of the world to come. And so this is true now in the kingdom. You can also give a taste of that which, which you have. Amen. It flows from, from within you, a stream of living water, welling up to eternal life. Amen. Therefore, if a man cleanses himself from these things, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful to the master, prepared for every good work. This is what the blood of Christ does in us. We are vessels for honor. Now, this, Paul, this is what Paul writes in 2 Timothy. He doesn't say some are vessels for, for uh, dishonored purposes and some for honored. No, if you are in Christ, you are a vessel for honor. You carry the good word of God within you for the kingdom of God. Now, everyone in this world is a laborer for either the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. No one is exempt from this unless, of course, you die uh, before, before age of decision. But everyone who dies dies in the deeds of Satan or the deeds in God, of God. You are engaged in evil deeds or you're laboring together with God. Therefore, you cannot serve two masters. So now is the time to distinguish between the righteous and the wicked and between the one who served God and the one who does not serve him. So as for me, I will labor for the wreath which is imperishable. Amen. Amen. Now, obviously, God has done a lot of work on us before we could work for him. It says we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Now, in Romans 3, uh, which is a quotation of the prophets, 
uh, Paul gives an assessment of the entire human race after the condemnation of the law. All has turned away. This is the assessment of the entire human race. They have to together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Mm -hmm. But now after Christ, you are a chosen race. A re royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. God would not possess a defiled people. Amen. Amen. Now, here's the reason why we are these things in Christ, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. That's why Christ has, Christ and God has made you these things uh, in the day of salvation. Now, how are, how are we made usable to God? When we come to God, we are not in a fit state to work for him, proclaiming the favorable year of the Lord. So a lot of work has, has been done in you. For one, we are born again. Mm -hmm. Now, man fell to such an extent from God that he died to God. He must be born again. So we are, flesh gives birth to flesh, spirit gives birth to spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, your new self is in the likeness of God, has been created in righteousness and holiness of truth. God Amen. cannot labor with anyone not like himself. Mm -hmm. If you're in opposition to God, you cannot labor together with him for his purpose. But in Christ, we are, have been created in the likeness of God. We might labor together with him. Now, Christ said we are yoked together with him. Mm -hmm. Now, a yoke of oxen cannot be, they have two different in pur purposes and intents. They have to have one because they're yoked together. Yeah. Thus, we are with Christ. Amen. We had to be made like God before we could be usable to God. Now, here's another aspect of made vessels for honor. We are new creatures. If any man be in Christ, he is... A new creation. Yeah. Don't. It, it's not. You better be a new creation. You are a new creation. Amen. Now, no one puts new wine into old wineskins mm -hmm. because the wineskins will burst and both will be ruined. Rather, you put new wine into new wineskins. See the the how you came to Christ. You were not fit to to contain what God had for you. So He made you a new creation, a new wineskin, mm -hmm. as it were, and both are preserved. Amen. I like that. So behold, old things are gone and all things are new. Now here, here's a precious aspect that I wish every... Now there are preachers proclaiming the word of God that don't know this. And it's, now we're transferred. Okay, he's delivered us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. No one can preach the kingdom of God unless they are in the kingdom of God. Some people try to, but it's obvious we know them by their fruit. And so... Each one performs the works of the kingdom that they are in, the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. Now, this world is like an arena of manifestation for the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. And through the sons of men, Satan and God manifest their own kingdom through, through their works. So we are no longer strangers and aliens of God's household, but, but we are, are of God's household. Now, here's, here, here's the concept we find. It's like hearing of World War II from the reporter sitting in an office in New York City compared to the difference from hearing World War II from great uncle Jim who was on the line. That's the difference. We don't want anybody standing outside the holiest of all telling us what they think they see in there. God puts us in the holiest of all and we call out uh, to the people outside. We are made, made worthy. Now here's another thing. We are born again so we must learn grow up to a mature man to the stature of the fullness which belongs to Christ. Mm -hmm. Now the prophet Isaiah declared, all your sons will be taught of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we've been brought to God, we, we learn of God. Uh, Paul said in the, in the Ephesians letter, you have not so learned Christ. You can learn Christ in the wrong way, but then you don't really have Christ. So we learn Christ from Christ. Mm -hmm. Come Amen. to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Amen. So we are joined together, one spirit with the Lord, and we, we learn from Christ. And also grace instructs us. Mm -hmm. The grace of God, which has appeared bringing salvation to all men, instructs us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. This is what the grace of God is teaching us. And this, is, this all fits in to me made vessels for honor. Mm -hmm. Made Amen. vessels for honor. And here's another aspect, we are illumined. No one, like if, if this room was dark, we, I couldn't tell you where anything was because it's dark, I, didn't, I wouldn't know. So we're called into his marvelous light. Now the psalmist has said, you have placed my feet in a large room. It's like salvation is big and we stand in it. 
And so we are illumined so we, can, we know our bearings. We can navigate in it properly and ministering to those who, who have need. Amen. So he's illumined us. God is light. His very nature, preferable nature, is to illumine and enlighten those who would come to him. Mm -hmm. So the work of the Lord is not in vain. His people are adequate and equipped for every good work. Amen. Now, God can use anybody like he used Balaam's ass. He can use anybody like that, but he can't use anybody as vessels for honor. But this is what we are in Christ. So therefore, being made vessels for honor, we're not empty vessels. We are ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Just as we have been approved by God. I like that. Amen. God approves us to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak. Not as pleasing men, but as pleasing God. Amen. Entrusted with the gospel. We can present ourselves to God as a workman who needs not be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth, handling the word of God and the word of truth, laborers together with God. Let each man take heed of how he builds upon the foundation. Amen. Now, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything is coming from ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Amen. That's Amen. the sufficiency to have, brethren. Our sufficiency is of God who has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. So therefore, as a result of these things, we may pray with the psalmist, Psalm 69, 6. He says, May those who wait for thee not be ashamed through me, O Lord God of hosts. Amen. May those who seek for thee not be dishonored through me, O Lord God of Israel. Amen. Amen. Amen.